Hi, I'm Rebecca and welcome to episode 18 of the Korea Bayonetting Podcast. Hello and welcome back. As I said, my name is Rebecca. I am a knitter based in Edinburgh and this is a podcast all about knitting, what I've been knitting on, what I'm currently knitting on and what I'd like to be knitting on in the not too distant future. Uh, Hi and welcome. It's been three weeks since I last recorded. I've been on holiday. I spent a glorious week um, in Tuscany, which was just amazing. Um, Spent some time down in London with some family and friends. And then we're back to a bit of a dreary Edinburgh. (laughs) I keep joining work calls where everyone who's based in London is telling me that it's 34 degrees and they're dying. And I am looking outside of the cloudy grey Scottish skies thinking, are you sure? (laughs) Um, I've got a lot today. I've got no finished objects, four works in progress and a little bit of acquisitions to talk through. So potentially this will be a slightly shorter episode. Who knows? I do manage to still find things to talk about, so maybe not. (laughs) Um, Before jumping in, I wanted to say a huge thank you for all the really, really lovely comments on my last video. Um, I included some of my sewing projects in that video and the response was just lovely. Like there were so many nice comments and I will take some time to go back and reply to everyone. Um, I've not done it yet, but I will because there were so many that just made me like warm and fuzzy because they were just really lovely. So thank you so much if you left a lovely comment. And yeah, if you are thinking what are you talking about, then in my last video, episode 17, I included um, a bit of like a little fashion show in my corner over there of some of the patterns I've been making a lot of recently. Um, Yeah, so feel free to look at that. Uh, I have the window like behind this wall, I have the window wide open. And there are some very enthusiastic birds outside, but we're just going to rock with it. So you can get some... I was watching the most recent episode of Knit Inc. And Natasha and Petra, I, they're, they're amazing. I love them. And they recorded outside and they kept apologising for noises. And then somebody commented saying, we can't hear them. So maybe you can't hear the birds, but I can hear them. Um, so let's jump in. I also, twice recently, I have fallen asleep with wet hair and woken up with like the best hair day ever. So last night, but by accident, like I accidentally went to sleep with my hair wet. Last night I was like, I'm going to try this. I'm going to go to sleep with wet hair. And it did not work. (laughs) But it's fine. We're going to just pretend it's like a beachy, cool vibe. So, okay, let's get into the knitting. What am I wearing? So I am wearing my Allure cami. I don't really know how to show this off. I'll sit like this for a little bit while I talk about it. This is a camisole by Kadri. Um, it is a really, really, really great pattern. It calls a fingering with yarn. The sample is knit in boucle, which is a bit like off-fitting, or maybe you wouldn't see it and think summer camisole, but actually it's it's perfect. I think it's like a 24 stitch gauge, maybe 26 stitch gauge. So it's great for fingering weight yarn. Um, it's knit really simply, like you knit the four, there are like four tracks, the back and the front are identical. So you knit these four triangles and then you join them in the round and then you knit the body and there's an I-cord bind off at the bottom. I talked about this also in my last episode and I mentioned that I had read online not to wet block silk and I got loads of comments saying I wet block silk all the time, it's fine. So I wet blocked the silk and I'm so glad I did. There were some things I wasn't happy with, like the I-cord was rolling quite a lot and my stitches weren't very even and I was like, oh, this would definitely work with some blocking, but I can't wet block silk. I whip blocked it. It was completely fine. What I did do is when I was reading about blocking silk, the comments were talking about how like if you leave silk in water for a long time, it can deteriorate. So I didn't leave it for very long. It was normally I would soak something for a good like 20 minutes if it's wool or longer if I forget about it. Um, but this, I literally put it in until I submerged it. I left it for like less than five minutes. And then I squeezed it out and I pinned it. And it made such a big difference. Um, I don't know how to get, like, I'm not going to get off and show you all of it. But it's quite, um, it's pretty much bang on waist length. It's definitely quite short, but I just was working with the yarn I had. But for me, it's perfect. I'm wearing it tucked into a skirt. 
and like the length doesn't bother me at all. And I'm just wearing a linen shirt over it because I felt a bit naked <laughs> for the podcast. I think I would quite comfortably, like, I think I would wear this out very comfortably. It's also like the I-cord straps are quite short on mine. I've made it quite high up. Um, so it doesn't feel very strappy or like very booby. But I did just feel for filming the podcast, I felt a little bit naked. So I put on a linen shirt. So now I feel like I'm rocking Coastal Grandma. I don't know if anyone knows that. Coastal Grandma is like um, Diane Keaton in a beach movie with like a nice crisp linen shirt, a like subtle tan. That's me and Coastal Grandma today. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's my allure cami. I love it. I only finished, like I wasn't crazy about it until I blocked it and then I blocked it and I took it off the walking mats this morning and I put it on and I was like, wowza, this is amazing. I've had to talk myself out of ordering more yarn for one today. And that's reminding me, I've not talked about the yarn. The yarn is Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. So that is 100% silk yarn. I used two balls of it. I think each ball is 50 grams. Yeah, 50 grams. And it's 250 meters per 50 gram ball. And I got a whole camisole out of two balls of it, which also makes it super cost effective. I think this yarn costs, I mean, I can get it in the UK from a UK supplier for about nine pounds. I see that Knitting for Olive have it on for about six euro fifty, but um, some taxes get added to that. So it's not particularly expensive. And for me, this was like 100% silk camisole for less than 20 pounds. That's amazing. Um, I was going to say something else about it and I forgot. No, I don't remember. The blocking is amazing. That's all I'm going to say. The blocking of the silk was so nice. The fabric, the drape of it's amazing. I might try to put a video in um, of what it looks like on because I feel like that might help uh, showcase what it's like. And I definitely can see myself making more. It's a very size inclusive pattern. Um, I made the L2 and I can't remember what size that is exactly, but it's very customizable. Every size bracket, I think is maybe an inch and a half or two inches. So it means you get a really good fit. Like it's not picked between, it's not a really wide frame between each size, which means you can really fit, like pick the one that's definitely going to fit you. And I think that's why it's led such a good fit on this one. I think. Anyway, that is my Allure Cami by Kadri. Oh, it's the colour Dusty Artichoke, by the way. If anyone wants to know. And that's our Wednesday. And on that note, I have a second one, which is one of my whips. Um, if you are a regular watcher or you've watched in the past, where did I put it? Oh, it's under here. Um, you will know that I took this one with me to um, our holiday to Athens. We went to Athens for five, five days? Yeah, we went to Greece for five days and we spent some time in the city and some time on, the, on a Greek island. It was amazing. Um, and I packed the yarn for this as one of my knitting projects and it was amazing. It's perfect for holiday knitting because firstly, it's only 100 grams of yarn, so it doesn't take up any space. And then I also found that the individual, um, like we go out to a cafe for the day and I could just take one ball of yarn and one like cup, one triangle, and that's perfect. Um, so we went on holiday again to Italy and I took another version. It will be slightly hard to show because I've not done the I-cord straps yet. But I have finished the cups and I have joined in the round and basically I knit half of the yarn. So let me show you what I've got. This is not going to look great. Yeah, it doesn't look great. <laughs> I should have known. Um, so it's exactly the same pattern as what I'm wearing. I see a lower cami in the L2 size. Um, yeah, and I've knit, I guess, this much under since I joined. That's like under the arm. So what is that, about seven centimetres? No, five cent six centimetres to be. Um, this yarn is also Knitting for Olive and it is the Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino. This is my second ball. Um, it's exactly the same yardage as the, the Pure Silk. So it's 250 metres per 50 grams. Um, so I just, like, I didn't even swatch. I just cast on with this and decided to just knit the same way. Um, and the reason I've stopped here is I've got a test knit that I'm working on, so I, I put this on pause until I finish my test knit, but also what I will now do is do my I-cords, um, the I-cord straps on this one, 
with this ball and then just knit until the ball's done. And I think I'll do ribbing on this. The pattern calls for an eye cord edging, but I think I'll just do ribbing. So yeah, that is my first work in progress. The, my second Allure Cami by Kadri, and I will definitely make more of these. Um, I got some pink, like dusty pink coloured fingering weight cotton um, when we were in Greece. And I think this might be what that turns into. Um, Cause it does seem like a really perfect fingering weight yarn. And I would, oh, there's a fly in my face. Um, I would really like to make one in black. So I have no need to order any black pure silk right now, but I may order some black pure silk at some point in the future. I would really like this year to get through my, like I don't really want to be taking any summer yarns out of summer with me. Like I'd like to knit up all my summer yarn. I don't have very much. I have maybe, four projects worth, five projects worth. Um, and so I'd like to do them all before the end of summer. So I don't really want to go buying some more pure silk, but pure silk is not a summer yarn. I could knit a silk camisole in autumn and it could be a glamorous winter piece. <laughs> um, a few things are different. I didn't do my provisional cast on with these. I just cast on and decided to pick up stitches with the eye cord and I do regret doing that, if I'm being perfectly honest. The reason I regret doing that is that on this one, I did a provisional, I did a provisional cast on um, without a crochet hook because I didn't have a small enough crochet hook that I wanted to take with me on holiday. So I just found a tutorial and I just did a provisional cast on with no crochet hook and it was fine, but it was still a bit fiddly and I still don't think it was very clean. So I was like, oh, it's okay. I'll just pick up stitches for the next one. I, I have since casting this on, learned how to do a real provisional cast on with a crochet hook and it's so clean and so amazing that I should have just learned earlier and done it for this one because I think it would have been neater. But for my next versions, I will just make sure to do a proper provisional cast on because it does make things so much cleaner with that like chain of crochet stitches. So yeah, the second thing I wanted to say about this is I'm going to dye this one. Um, it doesn't look so different here and I've also gotten a bit of a tan since from being on holiday, but the colour of this yarn is real you really can't tell on camera. Well, look how bad my rowing out is. <laughs> I'm gonna block out, it's fine. Um, the colour of this yarn looks very stony here. I've actually got another stone coloured yarn. Maybe this will help show you. No, they look like the same colour. Wow, they're so different. Well, they're so different. <laughs> they're as different as far as a crafter is concerned. This one is has this weird like peachy undertone and the colour of this is piglet, which I think like show it's like a peachy pink undertone. And I think it's very unflat not flattering, unappealing. I don't think it looks very good next to skin. I think this looks slightly better because I do have a bit of a tan now, but I think this is very, very skin tone. This is my usual Scottish skin colour. <laughs> um I just really love it. I'm gonna knit it up and decide, but my plan is to knit, is to dye it. And I think I'm gonna use some natural dye. Um, I've not decided what that will look like yet. My options are either like purely natural dyeing it. So like onion skins or avocado pit, pits, pits, stones, avocado stones. The bits inside avocado. I've dyed with them before. They're pits, right? I'll d I've dyed with them before. I've dyed a camisole. Actually, I've got a picture of that one. I like very millennial dip dye, dip dyed a uh, pink a uh, linen uh, tank top with it. I have no idea where that tank top has gone, um, but I've used it before and I really liked it. And that was without mordant and it washed and wore fine. So I could do that again. Or I might order some natural dyes. I know there are a lot of shops on Etsy and I might maybe use like logwood or madder for like a really nice purple or red colour. Or what I've seen a lot of, and this would take a lot more thought than I probably am willing to put into it, but I've seen people use dried flowers. So you like wet, you prepare your, your whatever you're gonna do, your fabric. And I probably would do this with other things at the same time. So some linen, maybe I'd order some sock blanks, I'm not sure. But you, you prepare the, the fabric and then you lay out dried flowers and then you roll it up and wrap it up and you steam it. 
and then when you unroll it like all the natural flowers have left uh, their own like little patch of colour. It looks so good and I would love to do that with this. I think it would look amazing and it's quite a neutral back colour so I think it could work but the chances of me being organised enough to do that are very slim and it's even more likely that I'll probably just buy some dye. <laughs> Um, and then dye it that colour. I guess I could solve all my problems and just dye this black and then I wouldn't have to make a black camisole because I'd already have a black camisole. But that seems a bit boring. I could make it red. That's way more fun. <laughs> anyway, that is my first work in progress. It's a, it's also an allure cami. It's by Kadri. It's in the size L2. Um, I cannot remember the full size range, but I'm pretty sure it was up to 160 centimetres something bust. And I'm knitting it in, knitting for olive, cotton, merino, in the colour blue piglet. There we go. I'm out of practice. Can you tell I'm out of practice? Whew. Okay, let's just go from one beige camisole to another beige camisole by also by Kadri. This is my test knit. So I signed up for a test knit by Kadri. Um, I love her allure camisole. She has another camisole I really like, but it's not a size inclusive. And then this one like sits between the two. So it's not got as full of a size range as the Allure camisole, but it's much more inclusive than some of her other designs. Um, I think it's interesting because I've been very vocal about size inclusivity in the past. Um, and I think it's interesting when designers have some patterns that are inclusive and some that aren't inclusive. That seems to me like a great opportunity to just sell a lot of the ones that are more inclusive. So designers then think my inclusive patterns are the ones that sell and then they make more inclusive patterns. I don't know if that's a very flawed logic, but uh, I saw this, this one was had a, quite a wide size range um, and decided to apply for the test net. So I'll put a picture of what the finalised version looks like. It's also a camisole. The original's knit in Cardiff Cashmere. It would have cost, I'm pretty sure Cardiff Cashmere is like £18 a ball for 25 grams. I'm making that up. Maybe it's £12 a ball. I'm going to check this now because I really want to know, even though I'm um, the last thing I googled on my phone was Coastal Grandmother. <laughs> uh, Cardiff Cashmere is a normally... Oh, it's just giving me... Oh, there we go. For 25 gram ball, 15 pounds. And I would have needed eight. So it would have cost, according to the yarn, I don't actually think I need eight because I'm already knitting on this and realising it's much less yarn than the pattern calls for. But... If I bought what the pattern suggests, I would have had to spend. Would that be like 100 and... 100 pounds? More than that, 120 pounds? 120 pounds on a, on a camisole? Goodness me. Um, of course, you didn't have a luxury camisole, but I got my luxury silk camisole for a fraction of the price. So all that to say, I'm not knitting it in the original yarn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm knitting mine in drops. Um, so let me talk about the pattern first. Um, I'm knitting the XL. I think I'm knitting the XL. I'm missing, I think, the fifth size. And this is what I have so far. Um, oh yeah, that was my funny story. I signed up for the test knit and the deadline for the test knit was the 21st of July. And then we all got selected, the people who got selected got selected and we got put into our Instagram channel. And then these people said, and then it found out that the actual deadline was the 21st of June and not the 21st of July. And I had signed up for this test knit whilst I was in Italy and I was like, oh, that's only a week after we get home. But I decided it's a 21 stitch gauge, maybe 22 stitch gauge. It's like a DK weight gauge. It's a camisole, there are no sleeves. Most of it's knitting in the round, pattern free. I can do this by the deadline. So I cast on, on a Monday evening. And what's today? Thursday morning. This is where we're at. So I think it's going pretty well, actually. Um, this has been my, knit my meetings knitting this week. I joined in the round just yesterday, actually. So I've done this much just in meetings yesterday and today. Um, so my hope is, I don't know, maybe we're going to go to the movie, the cinema tomorrow. And I thought that would be a great way to finish the body. But we might not go to the cinema anymore. Anyway, I'll get the body finished. And then all I have to do is do the eye cord binding and the eye cord binding on the arms. I think that'll take a bit of time, but I don't think it'll be, maybe I could do it on Sunday and it's on Monday. 
So, yeah, that's what happened is this is it. It's the same on the front and the back. And then there's like an iPod edging down here. This time I used a real provisional cast on. So you do a provisional, I can't even see where it was anymore. Of course, because it's, it's invisible. I think it's really there somewhere, it's a bit messy. <laughs> so you cast on provisionally and then you knit the front, the front bits and then you draw it in the round. Again, my rolling out is pretty extreme actually, but it's fine and I'll block out. And the yarn. So I am using Drops Saffron, which is 100% cotton. I've used some Drops Cotton yarn before and I've not been crazy about it, but this one I actually do quite like. My favourite, I think, 100% cotton yarn is Rowan Summer Light, which is really, really nice. And this is quite similar. It's a bit rounder and it's a bit tighter. It's a bit of a tighter strand. The Summer Light is quite well, an airy ply, which I really like. Uh, this is, however, incredibly cheap. Um, the sale has ended, but let me work out how much I paid for these. There was a sale on at Will Warehouse. Um, I shared it on Instagram. I'm sorry, I didn't have a podcast up in time. To oh, I did, I told you last time. I think I mentioned last time there was a sale. I ordered more stuff in the sale, of course I did. Um, is this my ruler? Yeah, so I ordered seven of these. And the cost for seven of these is £5.60. And there's no way I'm going to use all seven. I'm already on, like, I'm only on the second ball. I still have this left of the second ball. And I'm already here in the body of the second ball. I'm going to get two camisoles out of this, um, which is actually kind of annoying. <laughs> I wish it did use up quite so much, but yeah, so that's where we're at with this. It's really cost effective. Like, it's going to be a camisole for like three pounds. That's insane. I like the colour a bit more. It's a bit more in the stone colour, where the other one was a bit more pinkish. Um, but yeah, I think it's interesting. So far, so good with the, with the yarn. I'm really liking it. Oh, I just panicked and thought my strap was twisted. And I was like, oh no, I have to rip it all out. It's not. It's not. It's okay. So yeah, that's my camisole. The deadline is the 21st, which is next Monday. But I'm feeling good about it. It's all good. I think there's an eye cord bind, bind off. And to be honest, I don't really know if I even want to do it. But I think I will. <laughs> because the past, I'm test knitting. I really want to just do a rib, like ribs base on it. But I'll do what the pattern says and I might make a second one. And something else. I can't believe it was £5.60 for these seven balls of yarn. This is going to be such a cheap camisole. Who needs Primark and Shein and all those sites when you can just make them yourself? Cool. Two whips down. I feel like I'm being a bit weird today, but maybe I'm not. Uh, it's going to be a really short episode because it's already 23 minutes and I've only got two more whips and some acquisitions. Let me move on to my next work in progress because this is a good one. So, I will repeat the story about the saga of the yarn. If you've been here for a while, you'll be like, is Rebecca really telling me about the yarn again? Yes, I am. This yarn, um, I bought a skein of this yarn at Unravel Festival in Farnham in September, no, February. Um, and it's from a Gullet Farm who are a new yarn producer. And they got some of their yarns from last year dyed up by an independent dyer called Telling Yarns, who makes like story themed dyes and a lot of natural dyeing. And there was a, there was a range, I think it'd be six, five or six colours, and this was one of them, and this colour was forest green. I saw it unravel, I fell in love with it. There was only one skein, and I just really wanted to make a sweater out of it. And there was one skein, and I was so sad. <laughs> um so I yeah, I was just really gutted. But I bought the one skein there was, and I was like, well, worst case, I'll make a hat. Like, I'll do something, because I, I love this colour. I think it's such an interesting colour. I don't think you see it very often. And I love this yarn, and I'd like to, I need to have it. I, I need it to be my possession. And then, um, Stephanie, Steph from Gullet Yarns, dropped me a message and was like, I'm popping something in the post to you. And I was like, okay. And I opened up a bag, and there was another skein of this yarn. So I had 800 metres of this yarn and I knew I wanted a sweater out of it and I went looking. I didn't really want, like the classics that come to mind with that are something short sleeved. I'm not crazy about short sleeve sweaters. I don't really wear them very often. 
Um, so that wasn't like really calling to me. And then there was a ranunculus. I've also made a few of them, but I I don't dislike them, but I don't love them. And also the same with the love note. Like I wanted something much, much more simple. And then I was watching the grocery girls, who everyone watches, I'm sure. And um, Jody was making the Lento sweater, which is a pattern by Lina Magazine. And it is basically like a 15 stitch gauge raglan sweater that answered every single one of my questions. So I cast it on. So I finished the body. This is what it looks like. Oh. Ah. It's blowing it a little bit. I do find my window here is quite bright. So it's definitely a bit more of a rich green, but it looks so good. Yeah. So let me talk about this. Like I said, it's a 15 stitch gauge. It's worked top down, it's a raglan. It has no, it does have, oh right, it has wrap and turn, so I changed it from German short rows. Um, it has interesting increases. It took me a while to get a hang off. I think they might be lifted increases. I can't remember now, to be honest. But the raglan is like a two stitch raglan with a really interesting, like my, I usually, when I've made raglans in the past, it's almost always a make one either side. And it wasn't that, I think it was a lifted increase. I am using, so it's one strand of fingering weight and one strand of mohair. So this is my fingering weight and this is my mohair. Um, this is Philcolana Tilia in the colour Reseda. I think that's how I pronounce it. R-E-S-E-D-A, Reseda, Reseda, Reseda. So though. <laughs> um, and it kind of feels like a more saturated version of this. This is a bit more like a neutral and it's definitely got more blues in it. And this is much more green but I think they're a pretty perfect match, to be honest. And so this is what we've got. Oh, it's, it's so airy and so lovely. Like I really, I'm a really big fan of this. Will I just chuck it on? I will, because I'm wearing this shirt. Maybe that's another good reason to be wearing a linen shirt is I can just try it on my knits. So I finished the body and I still have sleeves to go. And this is what it's looking like. Does it just look really good? I really like the neck fit. I think that's lovely. There are short rows, so it's put up. Yeah, it's put up at the back. I'm just checking. I put it on the right way. <laughs> and it goes to about my waist. That's very helpful. It goes to about here. And like that's where my skirt goes to. So it's cropped. But it's, an, it's a sweater every 800 meters of yarn, so I'm, except I'm willing for it to be cropped. So yeah, this is what it looks like so far. Let me take it off. Okay, I'm reclothed. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. Unsurprisingly, it ended up incredibly quickly. And I really, really, really enjoy the fabric. It's hard to explain, actually. It's very light, of course. Um, this is so far, I guess, 100 gram, just over 100 grams, so I'm two balls of mohair. So this is probably about 150, 160 grams worth of yarn. It is like, it's a loose gauge because of course it is, it's 15 stitches. So if I go like, you can see through it if I like stretch out, but you saw me wearing it, like it's not see-through, which I really enjoy. And so where I'm at now is the pattern has three quarter length sleeves and I would like the sleeves to be as long as possible because I just don't, like. I like a bracelet length sleeve, I don't love a three quarter length sleeve. So what I did was I knit until I finished the first ball and then I did the ribbing with the second ball of yarn. And so now I did a ribbing in a little bit. So I think this is about 90 grams. And my plan is just to knit 50% of each sleeve. So I've weighed it already, I think it's like 88 grams. So my plan is basically to knit until I get to 44-ish grams much exactly 44 grams um for the sleeve and then to the second sleeve and I might just not bind off the first sleeve until I finish the second sleeve um and we'll see what we get to so I think this will be once I finish my test knit I'll start knitting on this again this was my plane in the round like in the round knit but my test knit has taken priority because it's only got a week deadline but I finished the body on this on Monday and I just love it it's so nice to knit I'm knitting it on six millimeter needles Six millimeter, yeah, six millimeter needles. <laughs> um, 
I will definitely make more of these. 150% make more. It's way more size inclusive than the no frills. Like it's got, I think it goes, it's, it's a broader size range. So that makes it better. And it's just a really, really great raglan pattern. Um, I don't think all sizes you can get out of two skeins of yarn or like 800 meters, but quite a lot of the, the first ones do. And I think you can get all of them out of three skeins of yarn. Um, I think the one I'm making has a 120 centimeter bust. So it's still a lot like I'm not making the second size, I'm making maybe the third or fourth, I think, I think. And yeah. Oh, it just looks so good. So I've got some more for me, this has unlocked the power, and it's probably a bad thing, but it's unlocked hand dyed yarn for me. Because I think like a lot of hand dyed yarn um is really pricey, of course, because it's an artisanal product and people have spent a lot of time creating it. Um, but it also means like I knit mostly sweaters almost exclusively garments um, and hand-dyed skeins can mean that they're out that becomes like uh, an impossibility because you can't make a huge amount of things out of like a hand I'm not saying this very clearly hand-dyed yarn is very expensive because it's artisanal but I tend to make garments which require more yardage and so if I were to make a sweater in hand-dyed yarn it's probably going to be upwards of like 60 pounds plus and that's for a sweater with just three skeins of fingering weight yarn so it does mean that it becomes very expensive very quickly and then if you want to add more hair to that it's like it's a pricey 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 garment this way um of course one of these skeins is gifted but i think the cost price of this at the venue was 17 pounds the second one was gifted so yeah and then my mohair i think i've got four balls of mohair and they were six pounds each and of course it could you could use something like a drops it's much cheaper so it just means you end up with like a fingering weight, fingering, oh sorry, a hand dyed yarn, indie yarn, mohair sweater for a fraction of the price of what you would normally pay. And of course this won't fit the bill all the time. Like you don't always want a very loose open weave. It's not really open weave, but you know, you don't want a loose gauge garment all the time, but I will definitely be making more of these. Um, I have two skeins of yarn from Tumeke yarn and that's what my next one will be. But they're quite like brown colours, so I think I might wait until autumn for those. But the dangerous thing here is now I know I can get a sweater of two skeins of hand-dyed yarn. So I just keep seeing indie dyers, which in the past I'd be like, lovely, but I won't use it. Now I know I can use it. And so now I want to buy more indie dyed yarn. <laughs> no, I will wait. I am attempting, why do I even see these things? I'm going to try not to buy yarn for September until part of the yarn festival. It's not gonna happen, but I'll see it and then maybe I'll last a month. Yeah, so that is my lento sweater. I love it, I would completely recommend it. Like really, really, I think that's the thing with this pattern and with this allure cami, I want everyone to make one because it's size inclusive, it fits great, it doesn't use very much yarn, so it's really, it's really affordable. Like these are the kind of things I love to knit <laughs> and love to talk about. So that's my third whip. Okay, I have one more. Should I take a little breather? Get a glass of water? No, I'm okay. I'm gonna power on. So this one got such a good response on the last video and I've knit a lot more since then. And I've shared it a little bit on Instagram and it's had a ridiculously good response on Instagram. Um, and so what I've decided is I mentioned a few times I'm dabbling in pattern design and this one is definitely gonna be my first pattern to be released. I've got another cardigan, it's actually almost finished <laughs> uh, or like two thirds of the way done but this is the one I feel really passionate about and this I feel like is the one I want to put out into the world first and like this is my trademark, this is my my OG. I've got more hair on my nose. So I also last time didn't have a name for this but this has a name and um, so this is my Cargill sweater. Isn't it it's so cute. Oh, I love it so much. I really am obsessed with this. I really, really am. So last time I think I had a had a neck band, but it hadn't slit for sleeves yet. Um, and of course now I slit for sleeves and I've knit half the body. I was gonna just say, oh, I'll try it on. Um, but maybe I'll pop it onto some stitch markers while I'm talking about it, and I can try it on and show what it looks like on because I think the. It's going to get blocked. It's a very, very stretchy stitch. 
so it will get blocked and I think it will make it like open up a lot more but I do think it makes for like a really really nice fit the stitch so let me talk about the stitch first this is so oh, sorry it is a top down raglan sweater with a folded over neckline and it's knit in the stitch called well I think it's called a dip stitch um all over and it's like a dip stitch with a um single row of like ribbing in between it's a I need to properly check my gauge when I block but it's somewhere between a 20 and a 21 stitch gauge which I'll know properly once I finish the garment I, I think I'll probably block it once I finish the body actually um because I'd like to start knitting this up uh, sorry writing this up but I need to get a proper accurate gauge first um and I've been putting it off because I know that the writing up is going to be too challenging um and so I've been putting it off and just knitting because that's the fun part <laughs> Um, but I will, I'll start writing up soon and for that I'm going to need a proper, very, very accurate gauge, which I'm not far from having to be honest, but, um, it is named after my grandmother, her maiden name is Cargill and I really like the idea of naming some patterns after some strong women in my life uh, who raised me because that's really important to me. Um, and so this will be named after her. She doesn't know that yet. Maybe I'll tell her. Maybe I won't tell her. <laughs> Um, I was really proud of this last time I talked about it, um, the short row construction, so short rows will pull the back up, but obviously with a stitch pattern like this it's very hard to make sure that you're doing stitch, uh, what's the word, short rows and pattern, and so what I ended up doing is almost making this little collar, this little, you, you, you cast on, and you knit this kind of like crescent moon of stitches, and then you cast on for the front neck. So at this point, the back of your sweater already measures, say, four centimetres and your front, you just cast on and then you just knit. So the first bit's knit in flat and then it's knit in the round. And it means that you, you sort of created this bit of fabric, this loop of fabric before you start drop knitting in the rounds. The math to do that was challenging, but I'm really proud of myself for working it out. Okay, let me put this on. Okay, so you can get a bit of an idea of what it looks like. Of course, we're still missing a whole sleeve <laughs> and on this side, um, but you can see the kind of fit of it. And like this stitch really opens up, like it's a real stretchy stitch. Um, so I just need to get the balance right of like how I want to block it out. I want it to not be clingy, um, but I don't want to like stretch out so much that you lose some of that stitch definition. Um, I was really on the fence about this folded neckline, but I really like it. I think it actually, I find often with folded neckline, and I think it's, it generally happens, in my opinion, when the short rows aren't always done right. Um, but I find that a lot of them can be really like, like a turtle, like a tube neck, like like this in your neck. Whereas this one sits really nice and flat, which I really like. So yeah, it's my cargo sweater. <laughs> Um, whilst I'm still wearing it, let me tell you about the yarn. This, I will say, is a bit of a yarn guzzler. Um, just because this stitch pattern, obviously, like this tape. Okay, my goodness. <laughs> I forgot that when I was on holiday, I downloaded like 50 hours worth of things to watch. Um, like YouTube videos and episodes and movies. And I had all, like books downloaded for to read and on Audible. I couldn't work out why my camera kept, my filming kept stop, stopping and it's because I had no storage left. <laughs> so we're back. For you it's only been like four seconds but for me it's been like an hour. Um, I think I got cut off talking about the yarn that is used in my Cargill sweater so let me talk about that. Um, I'm using Filicolana Anina in the colour Marzipan. This is 100% superwash. It's super soft. <laughs> Um, it's really, really, really soft and very lovely. This is the one they recommend is like the baby yarn. Um, and yeah, it's, you can see like, I think that's meant to be a little baby onesie. It's lovely. Callaway's marzipan. And I'm using Drops A, Drops Kid Silk. I always get them wrong. Drops Kid Silk in the colorway light beige. So the Anina is definitely paler, but together they make quite a nice fabric a very porridgey texture colour which I really like. So yeah, that is my Cargill which is now put away. Um, and yeah, this is what, what she looks like. I'm really pleased. I'm really really proud of myself for this one. 
I think I was proud of myself for working out the maths around my Kathy Cardi, but it didn't have quite like the sparkle this one has. I don't know what it is about this one, but this feels like a real organic thing. I don't know. Okay. I think that's all my works in progress. I'm feeling very dazed. Whilst I couldn't work out what was happening with my, with my iPad, I went to the supermarket and I got rained on really heavily. <laughs> um, and I decided to wear my camisole and not wear the shirt and I got soaked. So I'm feeling a bit, um, I've come back a new woman. Uh, I think I just have some acquisitions to talk about and then maybe a little like life update. I have a couple of acquisitions. Um, the first thing is not a yarn, it is um, a little gadget. And it's these crochet hooks. Um, so as I mentioned, when I went, when I took my camisole abroad, the reason I didn't put, I didn't do a provisional cast on, well, the reason I did one without a crochet hook is because I just didn't have like a good size crochet hook to take away for that. It just would take up space I didn't really have. Um, and then I learned how to do it the other day, did it properly at home. And I was like, this is stupid, I should just, I didn't seen these before, so I ordered them. Um, so it's three crochet hooks. Sometimes they're called like magic tools or something, I think. One is three millimeter, one is four, one is five. And so this is absolutely perfect for like a lot of professional cast on, picking up drop stitches, all those things. And it's gonna go into my like micro notions pouch. I got two of these. Um, so I can take it when I go places. They're available in lots of places. I think Meg from No Frills Knitting has um, the same ones in stock so I'd recommend going there and I can't tell you if they're useful yet because I've not used them but I think they will be like I can really see it being something that I will um get a lot of use out of. Uh, so that's my first little thing, a little gadget and then let's talk about the yarn. So I mentioned in the last episode that Drops were having a summer sale or Wool Warehouse were having a drop summer sale um which I took advantage of. So of course the first thing I got was the saffron, which was the ones that was like 80 pence a ball, which is insane pricing. Um, and this one, I got seven of these and I will not need seven. It's 160 meters. So I think I thought it would make a good t-shirt and actually it would have been a good t-shirt, but I've now used some of it for a camisole, but that's okay. So I got seven of those. I got a few more summer yarns. I've not brought like the whole bag. I just brought one of each of them because otherwise it would take up a lot of space because <laughs> I bought a lot of yarn. And I will be honest and tell you I don't know how much of these I've ordered. So the next is Drops Bell, um, which looks like this. And it is, uh, oh, it's on the floor. <laughs> it is 53% uh, cotton, 33, sorry, 53 cotton, 33 viscose, 14 linen, which is a similar to quite a few other blends. Like that cotton viscose linen blend seems to be quite popular. And I thought that this was a good way to try it because it was nice and cheap. Um, and it's 120 meters per 50 grams. So like, I think summer weight yarns are always a bit, like the meterage is always quite light. This is considered to be a fingering weight for example, and it's 160 meters per 50 grams. And so these are all, these are considered to be DK, but actually if it was wool, I would consider 150 meters to be, if this is wool with 120 meters, I'd probably think, so that's what 240 per 100 grams. That's probably to me a, wor a worsted weight, um, but this is labeled DK. The gauge is 21 stitches per 10 centimeters. Um, and I got some in this colour, which is called Jeans Blue, I think. I'm making this up if it's wrong. And some in this colour, which is called Almond Rose. I is that Almond Rose? I think so. I really like this colour. I think it's lovely. So I need to do a bit of searching to find a good pattern. I might just make one up, to be honest. I'm, I have a couple of camisoles that I made last year and the pattern is not size inclusive and I don't really want to keep making the pattern. Um, but I do have, like, the camisoles I've made out of it, I get a lot of wear out of. And so... I do think I might make another one, just make it up. I definitely prefer summer knits with a looser gauge. Um, like this does say 21 stitches, but I think that would be quite like a, like a dense fabric and I'd much rather have a looser, looser fabric for summer knits. Um, so we'll see. So 
so we'll see we'll see what we get and I think I have maybe like six of each of these so I've got plenty not like crazy amounts um but I should have enough to make some camisoles I think okay and then I went a bit more hair crazy so the drops that kids out more hair was in the sale and um I think it was actually Amy Palco in her last video said that she to her knowledge she's never seen the kids up more hair on sale to be fair it's always very very reasonably priced compared to it's like by far the cheapest on the market it's normally like three three eighty and I think it was two pounds sixty so it was it was still a whole like discount um and I probably went a bit too far you remember or you may not remember in the last episode I showed that I've already purchased once from the sale I can see the bag down there and for that I got some yarn to make a cardigan and some black mohair but I got three more mo yeah three more mohairs and I actually got these to go with cones of yarn that I have in stash and I brought the cones to show them so let's start with the most controversial <laughs> I don't know the one that I'm maybe least excited about I'm having a bit of a nightmare trying to match red mohair and some people did leave me some great recommendations and I think I'm just gonna have to jump in the deep end and hope for the best so this is the red mohair is very like letterbox red and this is to go with my host cone now the cone is definitely blowing out a little bit here they look very similar toned actually but the cone is a real like cherry red and this is like a letterbox red so there's definitely a difference there but I think the main thing is that the core of the mohair is a real like it's a very saturated color and so I think it'll blend quite nicely I did also bring through another red yarn that I have in stash, which is this, which is Ool Centrum, um, which is sport weight. Yes, 100 gram, 200 meters. And so I could put them together. It's a bit more of an interesting combination potentially because the Ool Centrum is a bit more like variegated, not very, yeah, I guess, maybe tonal is the word. I'm not holding that very well. But yeah, so more hair to go with one of these i have no plan for this i don't know but i think that that gauge like that 21 stitch gauge makes me quite happy and then when i've got a cone i can hold this double with more hair and get like a oh it really sounds like oil this is host by the way did i say that this is host super soft if i hold this double i can get um a sweater of this head double with a mohair and that ends up being like an 18 stitch gauge which is also again quite a popular gauge so they tend to find that there are plenty of patterns i want to knit at this gauge that's the first one okay the second one is a pretty perfect match i reckon i didn't think it was actually but having seen it arrive it definitely has when i ordered that host i also ordered a, a cone of this which is the tobacco i don't need this color i have quite a lot of brown yarn but i now own it I don't know what I'll do with this. I'm thinking maybe a zipper sweater would be nice. Um, I think the gauge of that is like 15, so I'd have to hold this double. But again, I've got more hair to go with it. And I think that's a pretty perfect match. I think this one is called... Chocolate? Maybe? I don't know, can't remember. But yeah, I think they're just, they're really perfect. Like this is potentially slightly paler, but this also has still the spinning oils on it. So yeah, and I think maybe a zipper sweater would be nice for this. Um, I've got other yarn that I make a zipper sweater, although, but I might use other yarn to make an Ingrid sweater, and this could be the zipper sweater. <laughs> um, and then my third one, um, is this, it's a cone of yarn from Wool Warehouse, not Wool Warehouse, Woolly Knit, um, it is burgundy, this was gifted to me, um, as part of the cone along, and I still, like, I really struggled to get yarn to match, and I found some. Ta-da! Um, so this is ever so slightly like this is a bit more red and this is a bit more purple but I think that they, I think it would work perfectly well together. Um, originally this was going to be a Foxberry pullover by Sari Nordland but I don't think I'm going to do that. I just don't really feel like it at the minute. Um, I think the new design I'm coming up with will probably be a 20 to 21 stitch gauge because I'm predictable. I can see the swatch right there. I want to show the swatch but I'm not going to show the swatch. This watch right here. This is what I'll do it all. <laughs> um, that I'm going to cast on once I've started writing out the pattern for my Cargill sweater. So that could be one of them. 
it would look so good in red but I think red but I've got some other yarn as well I've also got a camel yarn camel color and wool hair that might I think that's what's going to be in also look great in white anyway anyway so yeah those are my acquisitions I have bought a lot of yarn recently and um, the dot sale was a bit of a disaster moment for me so I do really need to do a bit of working through stash um over the time off we're just talking a little bit like maybe we're gonna do a big move soon we don't really know but I do feel like my, my stash feels like a bit of a burden at the minute in terms of there's a lot of yarn there and if we were to move house it'd be a lot to get rid of etc so um yeah I think I need to go through it pretty soon I signed up for a test knit which I've got some old pretty much my oldest yarn and stash and um, I should be able to use some of that some of that up for um for that it's hobby diablo which is a mo acrylic mohair which i'm not crazy about and i wouldn't buy again but i'd like to use the stuff i have and so i've signed up for a test knit um which uses two strands of that held together um although i checked with the designer and the de designer said i could use if i get gauge i don't have to use two strands of mohair i could use a strand of fingering a strand of mohair so like this could be that actually maybe that's what i'll do that would be really very wearable. I'll swatch them both and we'll see. We'll see where we land. Oh, that's nice. Anyway, um, I think what I'm also going to do is have a bit of a rummage through my hand dyed yarn because I've got a couple of skeins of hand dyed sock yarn, not even sock, like hand dyed yarn that I thought might be nice to do as part of a giveaway. Um, we're creeping pretty close to 10k now. I think we're like 500 away. Um, so I don't think it'll happen super soon but I think at some point in the relatively near future there will be 10,000 people subscribing to this channel which is insane um, but to celebrate that I think I'll do a little giveaway and I think I have a might there will be a big part of the giveaway like there'll be a big bit I think which I'm excited about which I'll come back to um, but I thought it would also be nice to give away some smaller pieces and I thought a really good way of doing that would also just be to like combine some de-stashing of some yarns that just someone else would love more. I have quite a lot of like UK based hand dyed yarn, not loads, like maybe four or five skeins that I don't think I'll use, but I do think somebody else would get a lot of love out of. And which I don't want to like, I don't really need to sell them. I don't really, like I'm happy that I paid for them. That's fine. And I'm be happy to give them away. So that's coming up. And yeah, I just think I need to get a bit of a hold of my yarn stash. And it doesn't help that I've been buying some fabric recently. So my fabric stash is also a little bit out of control. Um, I think that's the thing, out of control is how it's feeling. Just a lot going on, a lot of stuff. And I would appreciate getting through some of my yarn sooner rather than later. I think about how much yarn I moved to this flat with six months ago and I think it's probably tripled since then. So that is a pretty accurate sign of how quickly my stash is growing. Um, but yeah. And then last little bits, life, life's been lovely. Life has been so, so nice. I'm glad that we're home and I'm looking forward to a few quiet weeks, but we had just an amazing time. We were away for pretty much two weeks, like end to end. Um, we had a bit of a week in London, we went to a festival in London that we went to last year and we went back to go again, that was lovely. Um, we got like wine drunk on a Sunday afternoon uh, with my boyfriend's little brother. And ended up at the pub on a, on a Sunday night, which I, I, mean, I don't know, made me feel like a real adult because that's not something I do anymore. So that was fun. Um, we had a barbecue with some friends. Um, we just like hung out and saw lots of people. We went to see some cricket. I'm a big cricket fan, so it was nice. We went to Lord's, which is the big fancy cricket grounds in London. Went there for a day, got a little bit sunburned, um, but it was a lot of fun. And then we flew to Italy. We were in, a, I've got some videos actually, I'll pop them up as I'm talking. We were in a villa, sort of like a, I don't really think the word is a villa, but it was a big, it's a big house that was split into 12 individual apartments. And so there were other people there, but it was pretty quiet when we were there. And it was like perched on this like Tuscan hill. And you looked out and you could just see like the rolling hills and the, the, the vines everywhere and oh my goodness it was amazing it was so nice there was a pool there um and there were like it's like a little like outdoor seating area and like some loungers and stuff so you could just chill out for the day 
and it was an hour, pretty much bang on an hour between Pisa and Florence. So we flew in and out of Pisa because it was cheap and easy. Um, and then we spent a day in Florence. We went on the train there for a day, which was really nice. Florence was lovely. I had a real, I saw, I saw the Duomo. Um, and that was, I mean, I've seen uh, quite a few, like I've seen a lot of like the European things, right? Like I've seen, I'm trying to, I think I've seen the Colosseum and I've seen the Eiffel Tower and now I can't, I can't think of anything else. I've seen the Leaning Tower of Pisa, but I saw the Leaning Tower of Pisa after I saw the Duomo, so it doesn't really count. So there's those like classic European landmarks that I've seen, but I turned the corner and saw the Duomo and like gasped. It's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. Um, so that was amazing. We we went with some friends. So we went with um, one of our friends, her parents had booked this place for a wedding that was due to happen during COVID. The wedding happened, but not in Italy. And so they were going, I had a spare room, asked if we would like to go. So who says no to a free week in Italy? Like nobody, so we went. Um, and we cooked one night, so we made, we cooked quite a lot of homemade pasta here, but we made like pasta from scratch. Um, so we made peachy and we like, there were four of us and we we're rolling out the dough and we're all a little bit wine drunk and we made this amazing, I'm not gonna pronounce it, but like a local Tusk, like a local Tuscan dish with this type of garlic and it was amazing, it was so nice. And we drank lots of wine, ate lots of pasta, had lots of olives and, um, Christini and yeah it was perfect and then it was my boyfriend's birthday while we were out there the day before we flew home so we came back to Pisa a day early and had like a night in a hotel went out for a nice meal the two of us um ended up a little bit drunk again I think you're just still always but well I don't know a lot of people I'm sure are not but for me I spent most of this holiday a little bit tipsy I think and we went to this really nice wine bar for dinner and then we got gelato and we sat at the foot of we sat on this fountain at the foot of the Leaning Tower of Pisa and like there was no one else there there was the guards that were looking after it and some people like milling around but like here is my gelato and I look up and there's the Leaning Tower of Pisa like it was so cool so that was really lovely it was just so so nice and then we had a couple of quiet days at home and then we drove from London back to Edinburgh we didn't have a car here we were just using public transport um but we decided um to bring the car up from my boyfriend's parents um which is nice because it hopefully means that we've maybe got a little bit a few more options in terms of some adventuring the summer in Scotland doing a bit more outdoorsy stuff which is a big reason why we moved here and I guess we've not really done very much of but now we've got the car we've got no excuses um so yeah this week's been really quiet work is hectic good busy I think but busy um and I've been doing some sewing I've got two dresses on my sewing machine, sewing, well, my sewing table right now. Um, my boyfriend's out tonight, so I think tonight I will sit down and try and finish them both off because I think I've got some fabric coming tomorrow. I got a dispatch notification yesterday. I thought it would arrive today, actually. Um, so I'll try and get them finished before the new fabric arrives. Um, and yeah, I think that's about everything. Um, it's going to be a, a weirdly short video, but I guess that means for easier editing. And... I'll be back in a few weeks. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, we'll see where I've gotten to with all my whips. I hope you've been really well. Yeah, that's all. Thanks again. I'll speak to you in a couple of weeks. Hope you enjoy your crafting. Oh.